Okay, in this video we will show you how to replace the motor drive gear on an HP LaserJet 4P. Uh, it's the same gear for a 4L also. They use basically the same internal components. Um, if you have a printer, even though these are you know, fairly old printers, 10-12 um, years old now, there is still a lot of them in use because um, for a home laser printer they're built like a tank um, they're very tough and now you can get supplies real cheap um, so if you have one you know you want to keep it running we'll try to help you with that um, if you have a, one of these printers when you try to send a print page to it or when you power it up it makes a very loud grinding and clicking sound that's going to be because you have a cracked motor gear um, like I say it's typical on these now because the little nylon gears are like I say getting kind of up in age and with the stresses inside the printer um, they do tend to crack when they crack they can't mesh smoothly um, and that's where you're hearing the clicking sound from so we'll show you how to take it apart change that gear and try to get your printer back up and going first thing you need to do of course is remove your power cable then we'll just remove your paper tray just set it off to the side and you open it up and you can remove your toner cartridge then on the side remove the little access panel if you have any memory installed in the printer just remove those SIM modules and then also this little wiring harness on the side just unplug it from the power or from the uh, main control board inside and you can just leave it inside the little access panel next thing that we'll need to do is remove the four uh, Phillips head screw, um, screws that are inside the opening cover here and there's also a fifth screw that holds down a metal tab it's a much smaller screw in the left front left corner just remove that and then also on the front of the unit behind where the paper tray was there's also a little metal screw holding a metal tab in and we need to remove that one also okay now that we have all of the screws that hold the chassis together uh, removed now we need to take off the plastics um, they're held on in the front of the printer there's two little catches about a half inch up from the bottom on both sides uh, you can just pull the printer up and just kind of lift them up and make sure they move freely and rotate it around open the little access panel in the back you'll have to have that open for the case to slide up um, there's also little plastic catches inside on the bottom here that need to be released uh, the hardest part is you're going to have to pull the case out so that the bottom of the case clears the power on off switch here so what you'll do is just kind of grab the bottom of the case and sometimes you, if you want to use a little screwdriver and just apply a little bit of pressure as you can see the case is beginning to pass the switch um, the little catch in the front here pops back into place so we'll just pop it back out now the case is almost past the switch I just have to work it around to make sure that it gets up past the switch and then the case lifts off we just set it off to the side Okay, next thing we'll have to do is remove the formatter board. There's a series of screws around the perimeter of the board.
basically the part that we're needing to get to is this motor. Um, there's two screws on the top, but there's another screw that is behind the formatter board, so we do have to remove the formatter board to get to that last screw. And then there's going to be four screws that hold the interfaces. We have those there. You just pull the board and it will come free. You can just set it to the side. Now this hole in the center is where that last screw is. If you look through the hole, there's a Phillips head in there. Just insert your screwdriver and pull out the screw. And then we can get to the two that are on top here. and then the motor will slide straight up. This is the little gear that we'll be replacing. Um, if you can look on them, you can't see it in the photo very well, but there's a small hairline crack. When the crack develops, the, the teeth on the gear start separating, and that's what causes the clicking sound. Uh, these little gears will just um, pull off. You may have to have a little flat blade screwdriver to help you pop it off from the bottom. But basically the motor shaft is going to have little grooves that hold into the gear. So you take the old one off, you get your new gear, and you're just going to press fit it back onto the motor. And then we'll just put the motor back in place reinstall the screws. Now the motor's back in place. I'm going to put the formatter board back on. You notice on the back of it there's a connector. If you look inside the opening here, there's the mating connection for it. So it's just going to align back up to that mating connector on the inside. And then you give it a slight push and it will mate right up. Now we'll put our screws back holding the board in place. Four, again, that came out of between the uh, interface connections. Rotate the printer back around so that it's facing you. We'll grab our cover, make sure that back is opened again. Now, on the parallel port side, you have these little clips. Uh, you do need to make sure that the clips 
when you put the case back on that they come back through the little opening um, otherwise you won't be able to connect the, the parallel port cable to it and so what we're going to do is just line up the case slides back on make sure our pins are on the back which they are Fold your little cover back on, and inside the cover you can plug that little cable back in, we've got our pot and a little bind here, it plugs back on that board. Again, if you have memory installed, uh, put the memory chips back in, and then the little control panel cover can go in. Have your four larger screws. Hold the case back on. and then the smaller screws that hold the metal tabs on. When you have the cover open, go ahead and put your toner back in and close the cover. Got that last screw inside the front. Slide your paper tray back in. And now you have a repaired printer. Doesn't make the clicking sound anymore. Much quieter, no clicking. Ready to go.